Good morning, this is Haney Elvanna, the president of AHSE, a project controls consultant. Um, I am pretty glad at this video today because I would like to address an important topic, which is um, how do you really manage uh, a complex project like a high-rise building that have that usually has way too many trades and way too many uh, existing conditions, especially if it's a if it's a building that's that needs to be renovated or a building that needs to be where you're doing partial demolish and then you're adding more floors, where sometimes you have a lot of limitations and access issues and a lot of different parties involved and whatnot. So um, I'm going to give you a case study of an actual problem that and a challenge that we had in the past and give you an idea about the approach that we took and how this approach has worked out at the end for the team. So we were involved in a project called 425 Park Avenue, which is um, a high-rise building in the middle of New York City and it's on Park Avenue. So in Park Avenue, you're not allowed to demolish the full building. So we took an existing building and only demolished part of the building. We had to retain 25% of the existing slab uh, in order to maximize the sellable square footage. And then uh, when we demolished the majority of the building, we had to uh, take down, let's say, 20 stories and we had to build a 44-story building. And most of those floors were double heights. So it's a very complicated project. And it's in the middle of the city and as you can imagine, the, the structure uh, load of the building changes. There was a lot of movements to the building, you know, halfway through the uh, construction, we realized that the building has moved about half an inch to the north and uh, three quarters of an inch to the east uh, because you're demolishing and then you're adding new concrete. So the building load is continuously moving. So obviously that requires a lot of uh, uh, studies before you move too fast with the structural work and the concrete work, which is the critical path of the schedule. So we had significant delays that impacted the schedule and there was circumstances beyond anybody's control, things that we couldn't even foresee ahead of construction. So um, one of the delays that we experienced and it was it was pretty bad is that we were, uh, the schedule was set up where every time you pour a deck, after you pour a deck, you go to the next deck and then you go up uh, vertically along with the core of the building where the elevator is. So uh, the problem we had is that we had an issue one time with some of the shop drawings and uh, with the rebars and then the shop drawing came back and rejected a couple of times and they had to go back to the manufacturer and then order different steel and different rebars and that took um, several weeks to go through that process. At the same time, we're talking about the concrete and steel work of the, of the project. So that's the most critical path. It drives everything, right? So we were sitting there scratching our head. How can we possibly stop the project from losing time how can we stop the project from pushing out the tco date because obviously there's a lot of money involved mind you this was a 1.2 billion dollar job so um, at hse we started doing some value engineering and then what we ended up doing is that uh, we decided that we're gonna um, separate the core of the building from the actual decks and then have some local connection in every floor so basically what we've done is that we said instead of having the core be ahead of the deck by maybe one or two floors, we'll let the core go up as high as possible, maybe seven floors higher or eight floors or sometimes even 10 floors up while we're waiting on the shop drawings and the rebar issues to be resolved. So this way we can go with the structure part of the building as fast as possible and try to gain some time on the critical path. And uh, we had a lot of resistance at the beginning from the contractor, the engineer said that it will work but the contractor pushed back and ultimately we were able to divorce the core of the building from the steel from the steel and concrete decks and then we were able to go as fast as possible with the core of the building and we were actually eight floors ahead of where the decks were and that saved us a good two and a half months of the schedule so the point i'm trying to make here is that sometimes you just have to think outside the box and you have to maybe involve engineers and maybe involve designers and always critique the design and don't take it for granted the original sequence of the schedule will change and must change and you should always think about how can you adjust that to um, try to bring the tco date back somehow so the moral of the of this whole case study is that we would like every engineer whether you are scheduled or not to try to critique the design and create the, critique the construction sequence and find better ways to save time on the schedule. And that solution, by the way, 
did not cost any additional money, uh, it did not cost any additional resources, and we were able to save time on a TCO date, which you know uh, ended up with a very happy developer. Um, should you learn more about how we can assist you and how Value Engineering can help your schedules, uh, feel free to visit our website at www.hsecontractors.com. Thanks.